Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Epeats. I'm Dr. Abid Rashid and today we are going to look into neonatology. As we know the neonatology is the branch of pediatrics. It has the heavy weightage of marks in any exam. It is a major portion of pediatrics so we will learn about neonatology in a bit detail. Number one. Number two we will start from the very basic so those who know anything about neonatology or who don't know anything about neonatology will learn about it hopefully at the end of these lectures. So we'll start from very basic. Are you ready? So let's dive into it. Let's go with the definition of neonatology itself. Neonatology is a branch of pediatrics or you can say subspeciality of pediatrics. It involves medical care of newborns, newborn infants who are ill, who are premature, who have other congenital problems. Clear? Very simple. So what is neonatology? Neonatology is a subspecialty of pediatrics. It involves medical care of newborn infants who are ill, who are premature, or who have some other congenital problems. Or they can be secondary problems also due to infection or any other thing. We'll look into that. Now, coming to the second term, neonatologist. Who is a neonatologist? A doctor who specializes in neonatology is called a neonatologist. Clear? So we learned about neonatology and we will learn about neonatologist. A doctor who specializes in neonatology is called a neonatologist. Finish. Now third term you need to know is NICU. NICU stands for Neonatological Intensive Care Unit. So it is like an ICU for babies. We need to be in hospital to practice this subspeciality because NICU you have to kind of it is a big intensive care unit and it has it is in the hospital so it cannot be made in some small setup in home or some in small clinic. So we have to be in the hospital to practice this subspeciality. Now another term that I want you to know is nursery. What is a nursery? It's also dedicated to the care of newborns so it is not something new it is their newborns we take care of newborns there but it the relatively healthy babies right those babies who don't have much more problems or who kind of need just a feed from mother that means the mother uh, has some problems the moms who due to the surgical procedure during the delivery or some other medical conditions they cannot keep babies near to them so we keep those babies in nursery but these babies are otherwise healthy right and thing that you need to know is that it is separated from nico it is nursery is separate from nico it is not the same thing preferably one more thing is that preferably we take nursery location uh, near to the rooms which are near to the mothers the rooms for the mothers if for example hospital has resources then even the staff for neonatology intensive care unit and the nursery can be completely different and separate right in most of the hospitals babies are directly brought to an icu from delivery room for a quick checkup the doctor on duty will ask for the mother's documents in which there will be detailed report about the mode of delivery uh, some antenatal history maybe the surgical procedures of the mother how the baby was delivered even the abgar score uh, will be mentioned on that file so neonatologist in the NICU will have look over it because maybe the baby is too much sick then he has to do some procedures then he will again after some time find out these scores how the baby is doing so it is used for the compar comparison how long babies are staying in neonatology intensive care unit so NICU stay until baby is ready to go home so if baby is sick, they can stay in an ICU until they are healthy, then they are discharged to their homes. Okay, moving to the next slide, we have here common cases. What are some of the usual cases that you see in neonatology intensive care unit? Prematurity. These babies do not get to complete their gestational term, so they come out a little bit early. So we'll say prematurity, we will see low birth weight, right? We can see low birth weight babies there, and they have babies like IUGR, intrauterine growth restriction babies. We can have congenital malformations 
or they will have birth defects, sepsis, pulmonary hypoplasia, birth asphyxia, and these are listed here. You can just go through this list and remember them. Prematurity, low birth weight, IUGR babies. We will have congenital malformations, birth defects, sepsis, pulmonary hypoplasia, and so on. Okay, till now I think it's not a difficult thing. We are just warming up. Now we have another term, NICU team. Who is in neonatology intensive care unit? The important thing is we need a neonatologist there. So we have neonatologist, it depends on how big we have uh, this um, setup for the neonatology. So accordingly, there will be number of neonatologists. Another thing very important, neonatal, neonatal nurses, those are the lifeline, lifeline of the neonatology because they have to do all those things to take care of babies, to, to make the IV, IVs for babies, to, to in, induce medicine and so on and so forth. And another person that is very important for neonatology is neonatal respiratory therapist, neonatal nutritionist. Sometimes those be, uh, babies who are, who are born um, premature over the time, we try to feed them through different routes. So nutritionists are very important there. But it again depends on the on the condition of the hospital and the funding of the hospital. So sometimes doctor can kind of overlook many of these fields. <laughs> Important question that has been asked several times in even in my class, even online in my groups, is that how much do neonatologists make? How much money do they make? Look. The answer, like any other thing, is based on supply and demand. If, for example, there is a good demand, babies are, there are some places where people don't like to have children. They have Ding syndrome, double income, no kids. So they are too busy in working. And there are some places where people love, tend to give birth to their babies. They feel it is a natural process. They love to take, their, uh, take care of their kids. So it depends on supply and demand where you are working. So there is no sure answer to this question. It also depends on many other factor, factors like country you work in and and the place, how, how developed it is, how much money they are putting in their healthcare system. But if we will take in terms of USD, uh, United States uh, dollars, it will be safe to say somewhere between 75K to 250K per annum. And it can be even plus minus. So main thing is that if you are in a super specialized knowledge like neonatology you are going to earn a good amount of money that's not a problem okay so now that's out of our way so let's move a little bit to the history history where from it came first of all we need to know that it is relatively new field it is not very old it was it was around 1860s uh, that the British medical community started recognizing high mortality rate among infants. They saw that a lot of children are dying, so there has to be some kind of way out for this. And there was one doctor, his name was Dr. Joseph D. Lee. He kind of first premature baby, uh, premature infant incubator station, incubator station he started in Chicago, Illinois in 1898. Okay? And 1898, Dr. Joseph D. Lee established the first premature infant incubator station in Chicago, Illinois. Then we had the first American textbook on prematurity was published much recently in 1922. It was not very old. In 1922, we had first American textbook of prematurity. And in um, 1931, we had Dr. A. Robert Barr from the Henry Ford Hospital. He invented first incubator. It was 1931. It kind of had a heat, oxygen, and as well as humidity to it. So it kind of was much more effective in preserving the life of a child. Now important turn over that important historical landmark 
that happened in the neonatology was in 1952 when Dr. Virginia Abgar he described something called as Abgar score what is that score it is just a scoring system uh, by means of which we evaluate a newborn the conditions of newborn how the newborn is doing so it was a score that was given by Virginia Abgar in 1952 and it was not until 1965 that the first American intensive care American newborn intensive care unit NICU was opened in uh, New Haven in 1965 the first NICU station that we had in 1950 to 1980 it was kind of a golden era for neonatology what happened in 1950 was it brought a rapid escalation in neonatal services with advent of medical ventilations of newborns this allowed for survival of smaller and smaller newborns so we could survive smaller newborns now and in 1980 the development of pulmonary surfactant replacement therapy we will see later what it is used for it further improved the survival of extremely premature infants and decreased the chronic lung diseases one of the complications of the mechanical ventilation uh, it was reduced very much among less severely premature infants that means babies who are born who are born premature less gestational age their lungs are not compliant so they have problem with the surfactant which helps to move the lungs in the chest cavity so we have to give them the surfactant therapy surfactant replacement therapy srt so that was introduced in 1980 and we saw that we could save a lot of children then in 2006 Several chances for the newborns was dramatically increased. We had babies up to 450 grams, gestational period 22, 22 weeks. They had a good chance, not not super high, but they still had, we still had a hope to kind of, to on the survival side. Now in modern NICUs, infants weighing more than, uh, more than 1000 grams and the born and who are born in 26 weeks of gestation have approximately 90% chances of survival rate and the majority have normal neurological development that is very important so they can kind of go on with their life nicely with a normal neurological development now coming to the future of neonatology how if you are if you are a pediatrician and you want to go for the neonatology what is the future of neonatology basically it is exciting and it has it is a promising branch of pediatrics there has been a lot of advancement in the field of neonatology in the last few years such as i just i told you surfactant therapy high frequency ventilators uh, we have ecmos like extracorporeal membrane oxygenation nitric acid so on all these things have kind of made it so exciting on the surgical sides we have surgeries and heart transplants they have also improved now it has been possible to say many of these critically ill babies that would have not been possible some 20 years 15 years ago so promising and exciting i will tell in two words the future of neonatology is promising and exciting we'll stop here and we will move on to the second section of neonatology stay tuned <music>